In this video, we're going to learn how to find the magnetic field of an infinite cylinder, which is carrying a current density J. And so to set up this problem, the cylinder is carrying a current density J. And let's say it has a radius of A. And we're interested in finding the magnetic field at a distance R away from the center of the cylinder. And so there's two cases that we're interested in. The first one is for R less than A. So this means that our magnetic field, we want to know the magnetic field inside the cylinder. And the second case is R greater than A. So this is when our radius is outside the cylinder, so the magnetic field outside the cylinder. So how do we solve this problem? Well, because it's got a high degree of symmetry, this means that we can use Ampere's law. Ampere's law. And remember that Ampere's law says that the integral of B dot dr or dl is equal to mu naught times the current that penetrates through the surface that we choose. And this integral is over the uh, over the outside of a open surface or over a curve, a closed curve. So let's start with the right hand side because this isn't going to change much when we have r less than a and r greater than a. So we can just do at some point, we can just calculate it at some point r. So we know that because the current is going this way, the magnetic field is going to curl around it like this. And so the magnetic field is going to be pointing sort of in these directions around the loop. And so B dot dr, because B is always pointing along what we call the phi component, so it's always pointing at an angle, we only care about the piece of dr that's pointing along the same direction as B. So this is just equal to the magnitude of B times R d phi. And R d phi is just the little, a little bit of length along this curve. So if we integrate this along a circle around the cylinder, and I've, I've chosen a circle because this has cylindrical or circular symmetry. So if we take the integral of both sides, because we're at a constant radius, R is a constant, and because we have circular symmetry, our magnetic field is going to be constant, or the magnitude is going to be the same as long as we're the same distance away from the center. And so we can both we can pull both of th these constants outside, and we integrate. All we need to do is integrate d phi. So we just need to integrate the angle from 0 to 2 pi, so all the way around this circle. And I should also note that b is a function of r, but because r is constant along this integral, or b might be a function of r, but because r is constant along this integral, b is also going to be constant. And so if we actually carry out this integral, we'll get that this is equal to b of r times r times 2 pi. Now what about this term on the right, this mu naught i pen term? Well, first let's talk about the case for r greater than a. Now in this case, our loop is encompassing the entire cylinder. So it's capturing all of the cylinder's current. And so i pen is just equal to the total current of the cylinder or the current density j times the area of the cylinder, which is pi a squared. And so if we equate these two sides, b of r times 2 pi r is equal to mu naught times i pen, which is j times pi a squared. And so the pi's cancel, and we're left with our answer for b as a function of r is equal to mu naught j times a squared divided by 2r or we can keep this in blue, 2r. And this is for my little radius r greater than a. So this is one of our answers for the magnitude of the magnetic field. But what about for r less than a? So what if r is less than a? Well, let's take a look at a cross section of our cylinder. So we're looking at it from this direction. 
if our loop is inside the cylinder, so if we have r less than a, so this is r, this is a, then the amount of current that we're capturing, the amount of current that's penetrating our surface is only this. It's only this amount now. So the total current, I pen, is equal to J times not the area of our cylinder, but the area of our loop that we've taken. So pi times little r squared. And so this changes things pretty substantially. So if we take our same magnetic field, which hasn't the, the integral for this doesn't change whether we're inside or outside the cylinder. On the left, we've got B of R times two pi R. And now on the right, we've got J times pi R squared. Now the pi's cancel and one of the R's cancel. And so we're left with B as a function of R being equal to J times R divided by two. So this is for R less than, or let's say less than or equal to A. And this is a very different answer. So uh, inside the cylinder, the magnetic field actually increases as our radius increases, but outside the cylinder, the magnetic field decreases, goes like one over R. And this is because inside the cylinder, as our surface increases in size, we're capturing more and more current and we're capturing current like r squared. So if we increase r by a factor of two, our current increases by a factor of four. Oh, and it looks like I've forgotten a, a mu naught here. So there should be a mu naught, mu naught j times r. Finally, I'd like to thank all my patrons on Patreon. Your support is greatly appreciated and it is you who makes these videos possible. If you aren't currently a patron, to get early video access, behind the scenes footage, exclusive content, and join a like minded community, click the link on screen or in the description below. Thanks for watching.